All right, we're going to continue our series here. Uh, the series that we're on right now, as you remain standing with me here, is uh, the series called God First, based out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And the Bible reads there, it says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. See, a lot of people just say, seek first, but that's not actually what scripture says. It says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You'll find God when you seek him in that way. Yeah. I'm going to encourage some people this morning that are looking for him. You'll find him. And you will find out the purpose, the plan, and the God potential that he's put inside you as well. And so we're based off this series here that all things will be given to you as well. And so we've talked about God first in our finances. We've talked about God first in our family. And this morning, we're going to talk about God first in our faith. And I think the crux of Christianity, hear me now, this is, this is what is hinged on our salvation, is that we believe that someone came to this earth, died for your and I's sins, and that through relationship with him, because he rose again, not just because he came and died, but because he rose again, the resurrection of life, that you and I now get to partner in that new life with him as well. And so now our walk is just a matter of a day-to-day -day choice, come on overflow, of saying, God, I'm gonna put you first in this area of my life. And so I'm excited to, to continue our series. Would you uh, turn with me? If you didn't get a message outline, our ushers, our amazing ushers have them. They're gonna give you one of those. And all those are, it's a way for you to follow along. You can pre-guess what the word or the, the points are there. We see you. But outside of that, you can follow along with our message outline there. Would you read me, with me here? First Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 through 37. Very familiar text about the story of David. Well, I want to just uh, focus on and hone in on a few things here that I saw within the text that God showed me for you this morning. The Bible says, but David, someone say, but David, but David, said to Saul, he says this, check this out. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, David wasn't like, yo, I just let it be. He said, no, I went after it. I struck that thing. And I rescued, oh, sorry, it's the youth pastor coming at me. I'm sorry. And rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. Why is David saying all this in this portion of the scripture here? Because of this very part right here. He says, this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them. What faith? Because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. I want to minister to you a message that we've titled God First in Our Faith, but if I had to give it a second title, I would call it Step by Step, Step by Step. Hey, would you pray with me this morning? Jesus, we come to you first and foremost with complete humility, but also with realizing the fact of this. There are things in our life right now that we don't have the answers for. We're putting our faith in things, God, that not with shame, guilt, or condemnation, or judgment, God, but maybe they're in some other things. Would you just help us today to gain insight, understanding, and revelation of your word that would allow us to be able to put our faith in you first? Jesus, thank you for who you are in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. You may be seated on your way down. Tell your neighbor, God first, in my faith. In my faith. I'm going to share a quick couple opening thoughts. They may be quick to me, long to you, but uh, quick opening thoughts here. Uh, just behind as we kind of set up this, because we're thinking about the concept of faith as a very construct thing. It, it, it's so, so grand and, and esque, but re really, I, I think what helps us is when we start to hone in on, okay, what exactly is faith? What exactly is faith? The reality is this, is we all have faith, okay? We all have faith. It's just sometimes our faith is put in some other things besides God. I'll, I'll prove it to you. For instance, some of you woke up this morning, turned your car on, saw you were on empty, and said, I'll make it to church. <laughs> and you have such great faith, you're like, and watch me make it back home too. <laughs> Just feel the word of the Lord for somebody. Please, please, on the way home, stop and get gas, okay? My EV charger people, you're like, I got enough charge to make it there and back. I, I, I'm good. I don't need a charge. I'll charge when I get back home. But you have faith. You, you, we just, we realize that, see, sometimes when, when we come into church and we're just like, okay, well, you know, I got to put my faith in this. I got to put my faith in that. The reality is this. You already have faith. So here's, here's this, the culture that we live in today is we love to see the highlight of things. We love the big, grand stories. We love the outcomes and the projections. We love to see the results, things at the end. Like, ain't nobody want to see a step. 
I, I don't want you to tell me a story of steps. I want you to tell me a story of how you produce that thing so that, man, maybe I could just see that one day for myself. But the reality is when we come and we, we look at the result of that thing, a lot of times what it does is it makes us get discouraged about where we currently are in our personal life, in our predicaments, in our storms, in our trials, because we're looking at our life holistic and we're saying, why can't I be like that? Just me. Have you, ever, have you ever put yourself in a place where it's like, man, God's doing a lot for them? A few of us. But this is the reality that we live with today. And, and my wife and I, we have, we have the honor and, and just the, the fun and privilege of being able to minister to youth and young adults. And they don't want to hear about step stories. They want to know how they're going to blow up on TikTok. Like, yo, Pastor Tom, tell me. Doing all these weird dances. So probably not that one. <laughs> but, but nobody celebrates the step. Like, you're not going to go home today and post a picture of you taking a step. Because then you're going to be like, why did I get three likes, no comments, a bunch of spam bots. And then like, no, oh, it's the algorithms. It's the algorithms. Oh, the al these algorithms. They shadow banning me again. I should have used more hashtags. You know what? It was my filter. I didn't use the right filter. You know what? It was the song. I didn't use a trending song. Come on, my social media gurus out there. But here's the reality is all of us come with some form of faith. It's just a matter of trying to discover where are we putting that faith in. Because we all have faith. And when we look at the story of this text, we can easily look at the result of what was produced. Like, like some of us, were very familiar with the text that David ends up killing Goliath, but it didn't start that way. So what do you do when you're new to your faith? Or what do you do when you're trying to figure this thing called Christianity out? And you're saying, okay, I'm going to try and have faith in God. But, but you know what? I'll be honest. I have a little bit more faith in my skill set. I have a little bit more faith in, in my, my job because it's producing stability. Have you not seen the PCE reports and the CPI reports? And have you not seen what is going on in the world? And, and they keep talking about all these rate cuts and they're talking about recessions and we're in a recession and we're talking about all this. But you know what? My job has stability. But can I just kind of just maybe give you kind of a provoking thought? What if faith is just a matter of discovery of new knowledge? What if faith is just a discovery of new knowledge? I would pose it to you this way. What if you had to go through some things to make you realize where your faith was actually at? I know, I know, but, but it's going to get a little bit harder first, but then don't worry. Jesus is going to patch everything back up. I promise you, okay? Because here's the reality. We have faith. We put our faith in our job. We put our faith in a relationship. We put our faith in our spouse. We put our faith in uh, income. We put our faith in our skill set. We put our faith in, well, you know, I've done years and years of training. And while all that is good, you could come to church and actually not put your faith in God because of your skill set, your capabilities, your intellect, how good you are, your rapport, everything else you have. And so sometimes people live a life without putting their faith in God, but on the outside, everything looks good, but on the inside, they freaking out because they're one wrong move away. That's why I love this passage of scripture so much because what we're seeing here kind of correlates a lot about what faith looks like. So if you turn to Google, Google will, will, will tell you what these faiths are. You don't have to turn to Google. I did that work for you. Here's what Google says. It says faith is having the complete trust, complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith is having the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Now, the biblical meaning of faith, we find this in the book of Hebrews, okay? The biblical meaning of faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Great. I still don't understand what faith is. This, this is a very abstract idea that we're trying to break down here. And so what I, what I want to do is I want to give us this, this kind of this honed in area of faith just simply as this. Faith is something that can grow and develop. It's something that can grow and develop, okay? Because here's my working definition of faith. Here's my working definition of faith. What I feed, develop, operate in, channel, or steward will grow. What I feed, develop, operate in, channel, steward will grow. Because here's now what I fully believe about faith, okay? Here's what I fully believe about faith. I believe that faith is the revelation to the discovery of new knowledge. Faith is the revelation to the discovery of new knowledge. What do I mean by that? I mean simply this. Sometimes you will have to walk through a season in your life of financial hardship to know God is provider. That sometimes you will have to walk through sickness, whether yourself, 
a family member, a loved one, a friend to know that God is healer. Sometimes you will have to walk through hardship in a marriage. Sometimes you will have to walk through hardship in your business. Sometimes you will have to walk through a season of depression and anxiety to know that only God's peace would be able to provide you supernatural peace beyond understanding. So the question is this, well then does God forcefully put us in those seasons? The answer is no. The reason why that is is because we live in a world that was fallen by nature. And so for us, the reason why faith is so important as a believer is because I can have cancer hit my body and know that God is still healer. I can have my marriage on the brinks of divorce but know that only God can be a restorer. I can have such a situation in my business that looks like everything is going under. And in one moment, in the presence of God, me just saying, God, I need your supernatural touch on my business. A business idea can come and can revolutionize everything about that. See, faith is the abstract it's the construct of this it is the revelation of the discovery of new knowledge meaning this i believe we go through things in order to learn about god and his nature i don't know god as healer if i don't need to be healed i don't know god as as, as someone who can provide me joy if i don't go through a season of depression i don't know god as someone who can be jehovah jireh help your boy out if i don't need the need of some finances hello and so i just i want to i want to just Put this out there with this. I don't think God also blames you for putting your faith in other things besides him yet. But I think he's so good that he invites himself into your season and situation to say, which one would you want to choose? That's a lot of power in our choice. Like, I'll mess that up nine times out of ten. And just be like, God, I need your help. Like, God, I need your help to be able to make the right choice in this situation. Because I believe this. I believe you're here today, and you may be on the brinks of something, and you're saying, I just don't know which step to take. And so we're going to talk about this. And so here's your first point, point number one. Because we love the highlight ideas. We love to see, you know, man, they blew up. They went viral. They had millions of views. But the reality is this. Everyone's faith journey starts with a step. Everyone's faith journey, point number one, They'll put it up on the screens. Starts with a step. And in parentheses, a small step. Why did I put small? Because you want to know why you don't take steps for God sometimes? Because you tried it and it didn't work. Well, maybe it did and you just didn't get enough time. Maybe you, you, you came to church and you joined a connect group and you're like, you went home that day and you're like, man, that's great. I feel like my marriage is going to turn around. You get home and the first thing you step into is an argument. And you're like, <coughs> We just came back from marriage connect group. <laughs> Some honest people in the house today. We're going to leave that one alone right there. <laughs> but can we just be honest? It's like that sometimes. Sometimes you'd be like, man, I just had the best moment in worship. Oh, my gosh. God gave me a picture. He gave me a dream. He showed me a vision. And then you get home, and it's like darkness. <laughs> and you're like, what is going on in this place? As for me and my house, and they're like, enough. <laughs> what do you do there? What do you do in those moments when you're trying to put a step and, and, and put God first in your faith, but you're just getting met with so much backlash? What do you do when you start, you're the only one in your friend group, you stop drinking, you stop partying, you stop even sleeping around, and then all of a sudden, you get all these DMs, all these invites to the club. Oh, we're talking real this morning in the house of God. You start, you start getting all hit up. You're like, I'm going to live right for the Lord. And all of a sudden, it's like, he hits you up. And you're like, this must be from God. No. <laughs> this is not love is blind. <laughs> we're just going to leave that one alone, too. It's enough of that. By the way, don't take your dating advice from that show. Oh, it's like, I love those shows because I don't have that drama. I'm like, we don't need that drama. Leave it there. <laughs> be, guys, be just, okay, enough. Back to the scriptures. <laughs> but maybe you're here this morning and you have your faith in something other than God. Maybe it's in your job. Maybe it's in your spouse. Maybe it's in certain life figure people that have put their, esteem themselves only because of this is because they've showed you some validity. I just want to kind of pose this thought to you is, what if we give God a chance to pose who he really is? How good he really is. This is why I love this story so much. I said, again, everyone has a faith journey that starts with a step. But see, sometimes we look at scripture and we think about it like this. is like, 
Well, we, we hear of David's story, and we're like, yeah, you know, he, he, he killed Goliath. I know that. And, and right now where we're at is he's at one of the, one, almost one of the biggest battles of his life at that very time. And we think it's, it's, it's a lot like, like this tree that's going to come out. Because we love to see the grand scheme of things. We, we, like, we, we love to be able to see things in their largest. Right here's good, my man. I know that's heavy. It doesn't look heavy, but it's heavy. Thank you, sir. I said, man, I... I don't, I don't want something, God, unless it's big and grand. And so you, you're, you're praying with faith, and you're like, God, do something big in my marriage. Do something big in my life. And maybe you're here, and you're single, and you're like, God, I, I, I want a healthy marriage. And God, I want a healthy relationship. And God, I, I just, God, speak to me in my future. God, show me what I'm supposed to be doing. God, show me where I'm supposed to go to, go to school. And you're praying all these big, bodacious prayers. And all of a sudden, God doesn't speak back to you. And you're like, I'm supposed to submit these applications. I'm supposed to apply for this job. I'm supposed to be, you know, uh, we're supposed to start marriage counseling, but God hasn't said anything yet. What do I do? (laughs) This is why so many of us battle anxiety today. Why why we battle feeling so overwhelmed. Because we have our faith in all of these things. Are you ready for this? That are fallible. Meaning they'll fall apart at a moment's notice. If I put my faith in my job, I work for the church, so it really doesn't make sense too much. (laughs) But a little side hustle called real estate. If I put my faith believing that real estate was going to be my provider, um, interest rates are still over 7%. Some people know. Be like, yeah, (laughs) waiting for these rates to come down. Come on, my, my mortgage lender people in here. It's, it's, if, if I put my faith in my job, recession's coming, massive layoffs. And now I'm like, oh my gosh. That, that's the crux of our journey with God sometimes, is that sometimes we're walking, trying to discover, Lord, what do I do? Hey, have you been in a place where you're just like, I'm praying big, but God does the complete opposite sometimes? And he says, uh, the soil, please. God does something like this. Yeah, you're praying big. We, we know. Thank you. We know. But let's give you some soil. Let's, let's just let's start here. And you're like, that's not going to make me blow up on TikTok, God. <laughs> Did you not hear? I said I wanted a healthy marriage. And he's like, ta-da. <laughs> no, 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 God. I want all this. And he's like, if you want all this, you got to start with this. David did not start by killing Goliath. Okay, again, faith, grow, develop, grow, develop, okay? I I tried going to the gym and do one one sit-up. I didn't come home with a six-pack. I tried eating one salad. We did it the other night, and I was like, "Ah, still there, dang it. It doesn't work that way, and sometimes what we'll do is we'll have these parallel ideas that think, okay, if I just pray one time, God will do this, but sometimes you pray, and it's this. What am I supposed to do with soil in a pot? And God's like, steward it. Grow it. You know what you need to do? You need to water that thing. You need, you need, to, you need to get up in there and be faithful with that season. Can I tell you where David started? David started by being over. He was in the field, and, and his dad forgot about him. He, he, was, he was tending his dad's sheep, and, and the prophet Samuel comes, and he's like, the next king of Israel is here. Line up your boys. He lines them up from oldest to youngest, but David wasn't there. And, and he's going through, and he's like, nope, nope, nope. You got, Jesse, you got any more boys? And he's like, that, no. Oh, my gosh, David. So so here's the good news for some of us that feel overlooked in life. People may overlook you. Your job may overlook you. Your coaches may overlook you. But God does not overlook you. God sees you. He has a plan for your life. He's got a purpose for your life. Oh, and he's so excited for the things that are coming your way. This is not an emotionalism type of message, okay? I'm not trying to tickle the, the happy. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to speak to something that's deep inside of you that's saying right now, Pastor Tom... If I choose that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall apart. But if I put my faith in God, I just want to know there is some certainty there. 
how can we not be certain of who he is and what he's already done for us? Maybe you haven't personally discovered or had that revelation of who he is to you yet. That's why I think sometimes we have to walk through some things in order for us to truly realize you are my provider. I've been getting these miracle checks. I haven't got one lately. So anytime, anytime, anytime you want, Lord, just. <laughs> but see, there's some seasons where he gives miracle checks, but there's some seasons where he does Deuteronomy 8.18. He, produ uh, he produces the ability to produce wealth. There are some times where you're going to be in need and sometimes that you're going to have the need. There are sometimes life's going to look like this, but sometimes life's going to look like this. So what do I do in the in-between? Because this is where, where, where we think sometimes it's like, all David did was water it. And then he went to go see Goliath. No, no, but we just skipped over a very important part in scripture. Because David says this. He said, hey, Saul, newsflash, your boy killed a bear. You ever seen a bear? National Geographic is close enough for me. I'm telling you this, you will not find me in the, like there's this guy that's on Instagram, he just like goes out in Alaska and just lives in snow. That's all he does, he just carves his little things and he's just out there and I'm like, if I got even remotely close to a bear, I like, I, first, first off, that's why I'm watching on Instagram because I wouldn't be there in person. But David's like, Saul, so, uh, when a sheep was taken by a bear, I was faithful in that season and what I did was I went and I watered that season when the bear came. That when the, when the bear came and tried to take the sheep, what I did was I killed the bear. And since sometimes we think when we graduate from one faith season to another, it's this way. But here's the reality. There's something in the middle that's right here. It looks a little bit like this. You're going to love this one. Man, that at Pottery Barn will resell so high. This is so in right here. It's a beautiful stick. It's got no leaves. Had a, this, this stick has a story. <laughs> this stick has done been through something. It's been uprooted, transplanted. It, it, it's just been through life right now. And you may be here today feeling like this. Feeling like, man, I, I, I put God first. And I, I'm just not seeing anything. But David goes like this. He says, I, I killed the bear. Then I was faithful in this next season and killed a lion. I don't know why we think sometimes that this season is more important than this season. That this season is so insignificant to us. Because I remember when I first got saved, I was like, Lord, your boy needs you. I need you. I was praying. I was fasting. I was at every Connect group. Like some of y'all be like, at, like, you be at Connect groups more than you be at home. Hey, that's okay for a season. Go to Connect groups. There's my plug. It's time for Go Check Starter Point 2. Okay. But this is, this is where you discover God's voice. This, this, this season right here where it's just you and the soil. Like, let's be honest. There's not much to this pot soil. There's nothing revelatory that's going to come out of this thing right now in this season. But there will be something so revolutionary that you discover about who God is and who he is to you and who he's created you to be in this season. I remember, that's why I love the, the, the verse in John chapter 10, verse 27. It says that, that his sheep know his voice. I used to, when I first gave my life to Christ over 10 years ago, I was like, what does he sound like? I've never heard him. Like, like, well, like, hey, how does he talk to you? I would go to, like, every person and be like, how does he talk to you? Okay, slow down. You're talking too fast. Okay. Okay. Good. Next person. How does he sound like? Okay. Go through. And then I'd open up and then someone, get, someone had the audacity to be like, bro, just read your Bible. I was like, oh. <laughs> read my Bible. I mean, oh, obvious, right? But then I'd read the Bible and I'd be like, okay, he came in in an earthquake. Uh, don't come that way. He came in the fire. No, thank you. He came in the wind. Then I just closed the Bible. I was like, okay, that's enough for one day. I'm just going to. But here's the reality. God comes sometimes in a whisper. Sometimes God will give you a dream. This is why you can't skip this season. This is why, like, I know, I know we're going to get here one day. I don't know when. I don't know how fast. 
But I know one day our faith's gonna be like this. Maybe you're, you're in a season where you're like, man, I, I've, I've been mature in the Lord and, and I am in that season. Hey, don't overshadow others. How about we encourage the people in this season? How about we tell stories, God stories? How about we say, hey, you know what? I remember when it was like when I was believing for a baby. Here's what we, me and my wife did. We prayed, we fasted, we took communion. Because a lot of times we get like this and then we stop taking steps. So, well, you know, back in my, my 20s. I got real quiet on that one. You know, I put God first already. Why don't we keep putting him first? I said, why don't we keep putting God first? Why don't we believe God for bigger miracles? Why don't we believe God for bigger business ideas? Why don't we believe God, instead of us being employed, we would employ people? Why don't we believe God that you'd be the person that writes the check of 188,000? Well, see, it's easy. It's easy to skip this. But, but here's what I want to illustrate is sometimes we think, if I just do this once, I'll go here. But the reality is there's an in-between. And you know what's so... Sometimes within this season, sometimes, is you think that nothing is happening, and this is sometimes where people resort back to their skill set, back to the drugs, back to the alcohol. Because they're like, ah, oh, there's no leaves here, God. There's, there's nothing going on here, Lord. And he's like, you're just not looking close enough. There are going to be some seasons in your faith journey where you just have to silence every voice of doubt. You, you got to sometimes tune some people out, turn off the hip hop. Oh, I'm coming for your music. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Stop giving in to all the drama and focus on the season you're in with God. Because this season right here is getting you ready for this season right here. So, so here's my question about this text, because David's telling him, like, Saul, I killed a bear, I killed a lion, now I'm facing the Goliath. Where was David's faith greater? Was it with a bear? Was it with a lion? Or was it with Goliath? I think it just grew every time. The reason why, like, like let's think about, like, David, come on, young, young guy. <laughs> You're not mature enough. But David's like, who's this uncircumcised Philistine? Mind you how he got there, okay? David was overlooked, anointed king, back to the sheep, and then his dad is like, hey, David, I need you to go deliver this charcuterie board. If you know your Bible, David was sent to go give a report. Iliab, or Jesse, his dad, sent him with bread and cheese. First charcuterie board right there in the Bible. <laughs> I imagine he was just on his way, like, Hey, guys, what's going on? And when he arrives on scene, he hears the roaring, growling of Goliath defying the nation of Israel. And it caught David's attention. Can I tell you this? When you're stepping out in faith with God, there's going to be some things that you start to hear that be like, hold up, wait a minute. What would you just say about my spouse? What would you just say about my marriage? What would you just say about my kid? Oh, no, no. What would you just say about me? No, no, no. Don't sit right no more. Because God begins to start changing the appetite of your faith language. He begins to start downloading into you. You know what? I'm not going to speak limitation over myself. I, I am. I'm going to take another step for God in faith. I'm going to put him first. I'm going to believe the big things that God has for me. But here's what I learned. Because when you do this, when you're faithful with the little, God will put you at the right place at the right time. Can you be faithful in the soil? Come on, young entrepreneurs. Can you be faithful with seeing negative after negative after negative and then just a little positive? Just a little green there. I'm not talking about a lot of green yet. I'm talking about, oh, it sprouted. A stick. Can we celebrate this season? Can, can we look at this season with just like, I'm just grateful I got a stick. Because real talk, I used to be here with no stick, but now I got a stick. You know what I can do with this stick? I can make some firewood. Before, with just soil, I couldn't do anything. But now that I got a stick, I can make a little stick man, I can make a little tree house, I can do a lot of things with this little thing here. It's just a matter of perspective, right? And so, so David shows up on scene, and all of a sudden, David is there, and he catches this attention of this. Why is someone defying God's army? I mean, think of the confidence of this guy. Like, like this is just as a young guy who just shows up on scene. Where did he get the confidence from? You see, in the natural, David would have got whooped. In the natural, he would have got whooped. But in the supernatural, David was the biggest one on the field that day. 
because he was faithful in this season of saying, I'm just going to water what God is doing in my life. And he was building and developing. I think when he defeated the bear in that day, I don't know if it was the lion first or the bear first, but I think in that day when he overcame one of them, he had a revelation of who God said he was. Thank me out killing bears out here today. Bring another bear. You ever just have a moment in your faith where you're like, devil, I wish you would. And then he does, and you're like, okay, just kidding. <laughs> so I'm trying to get you to go, bet. As for me and my house, as for my family, as for my children, as for this diagnosis report, as for all of this, God, I'm going to continue to put you first. God, I may take a hit here. I may take a hit here. I may get a little lick in there. But you know what, God? You put more inside of me, and greater is in me than he that is in the world. So God, if you said it, and you believe I can do it, then God, I'm going to step and keep putting you first. David, in the natural, he didn't have as much skill set as what Goliath did. Goliath was a warrior since his youth, the Bible tells us. But in the supernatural, David was just faithful from season to season. And he steps up on scene with Goliath saying, enough is enough. So it leads me to my, my, my next point. Point number three. Or point two, sorry, point two. Each result, each result, thank you. Each result, <laughs> getting ahead of myself here. Each result results... Each step results in my faith growing. That's all that it is. This whole Christianity is a matter of us taking faith steps every single day. But can I tell you this? I'm not preaching this at you. I'm walking this thing out with you. Some of the hardest seasons that I had to believe God for was when I was like, Lord, I spent my time watering the soil. God, I believe I had big faith, Lord. I, I, I left my job. I left stability. I left everything, God. I have such big faith. And then we get married, and all of a sudden, we get an infertility report. Hey, I don't know if you're going to be able to have kids. My son's two. And that little rambunctious boy keeps me praying but reminds me of the miracle working power every single day, that God is my healer and provider. So I'm just trying to tell you that sometimes you're gonna go through some things in life and you're gonna question, why did I go through that? But then there's gonna be a revelation of, now I know why I went through that, because God gave you a story, he gave you a testimony, and every step you, every step you took in faith, your faith kept growing and growing. But can I tell you where I'm at currently right now? because this is, this is something that continuously happens. I wish I could, I could be up here today and tell you, you'll never have to deal with the stick again. One time, man, one time. Pray one time, you got it, God's still good. But what ends up happening is sometimes when you're in some very high moments, life has a way of happening. I currently find myself sometimes in, in these two seasons. A couple months ago, my, my dad was given, went to the doctors and out of nowhere, they just said, hey, um, you need to go to the ER. Send my dad to the ER, and they do a, a CT scan on him, and they sit him in this room. He's sitting on the couch by himself. He's telling us a story. He has a family over. And he goes, family, I don't really know how to tell you this. He starts crying, and I'm like, oh, this is not like my dad. My dad's the type of person who would show no emotion. And he goes, the doctors told me I have cancer. And everything inside of me in that moment, I'm like, I'm a bastard, keep it together. But everything inside of me in that moment, I was just like, okay, I just want to be here for my dad. But I remember just those next couple days, it hit me. And I'm like, God, I know what you did in this season here, Lord. I know and I've discovered who you are for me. That God, just because a doctor has said something, we thank our doctors, but that's not the final word, Lord. Because can I tell you where that developed? It didn't develop here. That faith began to develop here. When I was believing God for my own miracle, and he did it. And I watered it again, and he did it again. And I watered it again, and he did it again. And so I'm not up here saying, <laughs> I have the largest faith in the room. <laughs> no, 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 sometimes I, I feel like my faith feels like this season again. They told my dad, I said, hey, your treatment is gonna be pretty rough, okay? We're gonna have you on three cycles. Here's what it's gonna look like. Um, you know, expect all these side effects. My dad currently only has one side effect out of all that they told him. And I said, Dad, come on, that's the miracle working power of God. I told you, Dad, that God is faithful. 
I had to remind myself, Lord, you're faithful. And God, I need to see your faithfulness here in this season. God, I need to know that you're with us, Lord. Come on, sometimes you got to go back to God and remind him of his promises and say, Lord, you're my healer. And in this season, Lord, sickness has healed my body. I don't believe that came from you, but I believe from you can come my healing. So God, would you heal your son? Would you heal your daughter? God, I know that you're my provider, not my job. I was unexpectedly let go, but God, you know what? You're my source. You're my provider, God. Lord, you know the needs that I have. Your word says, in you, Lord, is the, is the fullness of Christ, and I shall not face no need, God. I'm not coming to you with wants, because I want a million dollar house. I want a nice property in Newport Beach. I want a nice car. I want all these things, God. I'm just coming to you with what I have in need. So point number three, and then we're going to pray, and I believe God's just going to expand the faith in this room here. Let me give you two A. Let me give you two A. The more steps I take in faith, the more my faith grows. The more steps I take, the more my faith grows. I mentioned I went to the gym once, did a sit up, didn't come back home with a six pack. My wife was disappointed, but I said, hey, I tried, you know, hey, give me a, give me a trophy for effort. But if, the, if it's true that the more we take a step in faith that it grows, then the opposite is true as well. But the less steps I take, the less my faith grows. Can we just commit to this today? Let's be a church of people that take the big step, the small, big steps for God. I want to fix my own sentence there. That I'm just going to take a step today. God, I'm going to put you first in this decision in my marriage today. The next day, God, I'm going to put you first in my work decision today. The next day, God, I'm not going to go to my skill set first. I'm going to go to you first. God, I know, Lord, what I've acquired over these past years. Top producer, number one income earner, gross GCI, all this stuff. But you know what, Lord? That's not my source. You're my source, God. And I'll tell you this. He's going to give you favor over your decisions. He's going to put you out there and make you look like you're a lot better than we are because he'll put you in places that you know okay God only you open up this door here so to be the less steps I take the less my faith grows last point here point number three and then we're gonna pray because David David was aware that this did not come because how good he was like he wasn't like look at my slingshot abilities but David was aware of the fact that Lord you delivered me from a bear so I know, God, that you have the miracle working power to deliver me from bears. David knew, God, you delivered me from a lion. So God, I know that you have the miracle working power to deliver me from a lion. And by the way, if God has delivered you from a lion, don't go back out there and put yourself with more lions. Okay? <laughs> but David now was up against the Goliath and is saying, God, you did it once. It's not me, but you could do it again. So point number three, our faith in God gives testimony to his faithfulness. I wanna tell you this, God's been faithful to you. I said he's been faithful to you. Even when you think he wasn't there, he was there. Even when everything looked like, oh my gosh, all is falling apart, he gave you just the wind of life to wake up and do it again. And I wanna to speak to somebody who is here today that you will find yourself right now that it is hard to get up in the morning, there's no motivation in your life. I wanna tell you this, your job, your income, whatever situation you're in is not giving you the motivation. That is the power and wind and breath of God saying, I put more inside of you. Come on, take that next faith step. Come on, wake up and do it again. I know right now you may not be talking to your spouse, but keep just praying for her. I know right now you may not be talking to your husband, just keep praying for him. I know right now your kids may not be home, but keep praying for them because I promise you this, if he is faithful to others, he can be faithful to you. Come on, can you give God the praise here this morning? So here's what I want to do. I just want to pray for some people this morning. You can stand to your feet with me here. I'm done.